What's up folks, I'm Private Hudson and today we're going to be taking a look at State of Emergency for the original Xbox. State of Emergency was originally shown during Rockstar's E3 2001 presentation. It was presented alongside Max Payne and Grand Theft Auto 3. An interesting note is that Grand Theft Auto 3 was mostly ignored at the time, while State of Emergency was getting quite a bit of hype as a riot simulator. The developers did shy away from the controversy by creating a pretty silly plot. A corporation has taken over the United States government, and you're part of a resistance movement trying to overthrow it. So you're not actually looting, you're destroying corporate property. And those guys that look like cops that you're killing, well, they're not actually cops, they're corporate enforcers. State of Emergency was released for the PlayStation 2 in February 2002. We're taking a look at the Xbox port here, which came out a year later and is the better version. It has slightly better graphics and better visual quality in general, as it is 480p as opposed to 480i. It also adds a couple of multiplayer modes for up to four players locally, but most importantly, it runs at 60 frames per second instead of 30. The frame rate does tend to drop at times, but that isn't too distracting. State of Emergency is essentially a beat-em-up version of Crazy Taxi. Instead of driving passengers to their destinations as quickly as possible to gain points and time bonuses, here you're causing carnage. There are two game modes, Chaos and Revolution. In Chaos, you have a 3 minute timer to score as many points as possible. The timer can be topped up by completing level stages, which consist of reaching a certain score. Doing so fills your health back up and introduces tougher enemies as you try to reach the next milestone in points. Killing cops, oh, I'm sorry, I meant corporate enforcers, drops health, time bonuses, and if they were armed, drops their weapon as well. Other weapons randomly spawn in select areas and range from shotguns, assault rifles, rocket launchers, molotovs, flamethrowers, and a few others. Power-ups can be found, which range from body armor, a bodyguard, and my personal favorite, the punch decapitate, which is exactly as it sounds, and it's pretty awesome. Objectives and multipliers are also randomly introduced. Objectives can be accepted or declined and usually give you a task of killing or destroying something very tough and dangerous. Multipliers give you bonus points for a variety of activities such as smashing windows or killing gang members. There is one exception though which penalizes you and decreases your score instead if you kill civilians. The mode ends once the timer runs out or you run out of health. If you reach a certain score, you unlock the next map, of which there are four in total, where you can run around doing the same thing again in a new environment. Chaos has a couple of variations that you can play, such as fixed time modes, a mode with no timer, and another mode where you have to kill 200 unarmed corporate clones as quickly as possible. Honestly, all these little variations are pretty uninteresting and forgettable. The default Chaos mode is the most fun and balanced in my opinion. The other mode is Revolution, and this one tries to present a sense of structure and story to this game, and it does an absolutely terrible job at it. Here you're playing the same four maps again, and you have to unlock them in the same order. This is a mission-based mode, and here you have to run over to a mission giver who gives you a generic task of blowing something up, uh, killing someone, escorting something, or getting an item and then bringing it back, and so on and so forth. Uh, conveniently enough, he always drops a weapon for you once you accept a mission, which also means there are no more randomly spawning weapons, and as a result, no point in exploring the map, because there's literally nothing there. There's the quest giver, and once you accept the quest, that's when everything else for that quest spawns. All these missions are absolutely terrible, and the worst part is that there are around 175 of them. And you must complete them to beat the map in order to unlock the other three playable characters. You start out with two, a guy and a woman, and each character does have slightly different playstyles. So it's a damn shame that the only way to unlock the rest is through these boring generic missions, which lack any sense of creativity and imagination. What makes them even worse is that they make the bad parts of State of Emergency even worse. 
State of Emergency is definitely an impressive game from a technical standpoint, as it is able to show lots of characters on the screen at the same time, with a smooth frame rate and no issues when it comes to pop-in and draw distance. The only other console games that were released around the same time as this one that came close to this kind of level were the Dynasty Warriors games, and those were plagued with slowdown pop-in that was so bad that characters right next to you would disappear and reappear right in front of you during combat. Now, in State of Emergency, the amount of characters that are on screen, it does come at a cost, most notably to the AI, as it is barely there. The civilians, they don't do anything. All they do is just run around like headless chickens. While the corporate cops only go after you if you're armed or if it's part of the mission, the AI gets really bad during escort missions as the person you're protecting likes to stand around and get killed without fighting back or get stuck on terrain, with the most notable one being the escalators in the first mall map. Other missions have you run around chasing a number of people who run around like headless chickens with no pattern whatsoever, so you can't just wait at a certain spot for them, you have to literally be chasing them around and hope you finally land a hit on them so you can finish them off. Not only are they hard to see, because the only thing that sets them apart from other NPCs is the red circle under them, but trying to use the map to locate them ends up blocking your entire field of vision. The more complicated missions simply involve trial and error. Keep failing over and over and over again, of which there's no penalty, by the way, until you finally memorize the enemy placement or the easiest path to approach the objective. There were so many times I had to redo a mission just because an NPC escaped that I either couldn't get to or I got stuck trying to get to. The controls make this a struggle as well. One button punches, the other button kicks. Uh, press both and you grab an enemy. While newer action games such as Spider-Man on PS4 like to completely take all control away from the player by simply having you mash one button over and over again while your character on screen automatically locks on and beats up everyone in sight. State of Emergency is the opposite of this extreme and it has no lock on and no targeting whatsoever. If you're not directly facing the enemy, you're attacking the air. Or sometimes you're attacking the enemy and then you kill them, but your next attack accidentally destroys the mission objective. Wonderful. This gets worse when you're using guns, as you can only shoot straight ahead of you, with no aiming whatsoever. The camera is the absolute worst. It can only be controlled horizontally, not vertically. But even then, it likes to take control away from you, and just gives you a random, terrible angle where you can't see anything. Trying to turn around while carrying an assault rifle to mow down the cops that are chasing you is so difficult, as you have to turn your character around, and not the camera, then start firing while holding down the strafe button, which also centers the camera behind you. It's counterintuitive and dated, even for a 2002 to 2003 release. Max Payne 3 had aim assist or manual aiming depending on your preference and difficulty setting. GTA 3 allowed you to lock on to shoot, but in state of emergency, you literally have to be babysitting the camera the entire time. Now these flaws aren't so bad in chaos mode, which is still a lot of fun to play to this day. They're just made worse by these terrible missions, which you'll be forced to retry constantly because the terrible camera screwed you over. State of Emergency is just an average game, really. More time should have been spent improving the controls and adding more maps and variety to Chaos Mode. Revolution Mode shouldn't have existed at all. At least, not in this kind of state. I understand that the developers were probably trying to add some longevity to the game and have unlockable characters so that people would buy it instead of rent it, but they really approached it in the most generic possible way. State of Emergency is a pretty cheap and common game for both the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. I picked up my Xbox copy about a year ago for six bucks, complete. Overall, if you like arcade-style games such as Crazy Taxi, then you'll probably have some fun with this game's chaos mode. I definitely did, but I'm not much of a fan of arcade-style games as I used to be, so there was only so much of it that I could play before I got bored. The Revolution mode, on the other hand, 
That is for masochists only, and it's sad that the rest of the characters can only be unlocked by slogging through it. I'm Private Hudson, and if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.